Alrighty. Hello guys, how's it going? Matt Donovan here from itsworthashot.com. Welcome to a, another video. Um, a couple weeks ago, I asked you guys to send me one of your images so that I could make a video editing that image. And this is that very video. So shout out to Dale uh, at Dale G Photo on Instagram for sending me this image. Uh, what you're seeing now is just the raw image, so please don't judge Dale on his abilities um, until after you see the finished edit um, and what the image is capable of resulting in. Alrighty, so let's head over to the computer and start the edit. All right, guys, so here we are in Lightroom, and the first thing I wanna do is straighten the image. Um, let's be honest, it's pretty much impossible to get a perfectly straight image out of camera. Um, uh, the electronic level thing is never super accurate. Uh, so there we go, I adjusted that by like, not even half a degree, but it uh, makes the difference. Next, I'm going to reduce the exposure because as you can see, it's quite bright. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. Um, and I'm gonna drop the highlights as well, probably to around negative 100 and increase the shadows to somewhere around pretty high, maybe 85. I'm gonna chuck on a grad filter and just cover the sky and a little bit into the foreground as well. I think that will do it. And I'm gonna reduce the exposure again to around there-ish and the highlights down just a tad as well and I think that's looking good basically what I'm doing in Lightroom is just balancing the exposure um, I don't want any blown highlights or any crushed blacks um, you can see the blacks are probably a little dark down here but I don't think they're actually fully clipped yet which is good then I'm gonna head down to lens corrections and just enable remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections um, what that's going to do is remove any colored fringing from high contrast areas and also um, adjust for any vignetting or distortion you get from um, in particular wide angle lenses. Then we're going to come down a little further and shift the blue channel this way just a touch maybe around there. Um, the water looks terrible at this stage but I'm basically just I'm looking at the the oranges in the sky um, shifting the blue channel helps uh, bring out some of those red tones uh, in a fiery sky like this. Um, and then to combat the weird looking blues now, I'm just going to grab my blue channel and shift this up around there. And I'm also going to uh, split the difference with the uh, colors on either side of the blue just so that there's no weird um, banding in between the changes in color and at this stage I think I'm ready to head over to Photoshop so just gonna right click edit in edit in Photoshop okie dokie guys so the first thing I do in uh, Photoshop usually is any um, distractions I remove them um, usually I would use the uh, spot healing brush tool or as I like to call it the pooper scooper and we're just gonna flick these little poops over into the neighbor's yard because well maybe we invited them to the annual street Christmas party they RSVP'd yes um, and they never turned up so jokes on them because they're getting poop flung into the yard. Jerks. Okay, so just going around here, removing all these little poops, flicking them over the fence. Um, I've got a little action that I use to help find these poops, um, and it's called, where is it? To find dust spots. I should really rename that to find poops. And it basically is a gradient map. Uh, adjustment layer with like a zebra looking gradient here just to kind of make the image look like shit. all right I'm probably just gonna leave it at that um, if this was an image that I was 
delivering to a client or to get printed or to even to post online, I'd be going over it a little bit more aggressively. But for the sake of this video, I think that looks good. Um, and the next thing I want to do is just introduce a little bit of glow to the highlights of the image. So now what I want to do is create a stamp visible layer and I'm going to select the lights of the image. So I'm going to hit command and click on the RGB channel here and that's going to select um, the lighter pixels in the image. But I actually want to refine that selection a little bit more just to only select the really bright lights. Um, so I'm going to hit command, option, shift and select the RGB channel one more time. And as you can see by the marching ants, they have shrunken in and are only marching around the um, kind of the extreme highlights, if you will. Uh, so what I'm going to do with that selection is I'm going to jump the pixels from this layer onto their own layer. So I'm going to hit command J, J for jump, I guess, and delete that original layer because we don't need it. Select that layer. I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to do mm, somewhere around 28. I think that's roughly the resolution of this camera. I'm not entirely sure. And then I'm gonna hit OK and reduce the opacity to like 40% and just grab a gradient uh, a mask on this like that just so that it only is applied to the sky. You might not be able to see this on YouTube but it's added quite a nice glow um, to the highlights in the sky. And now, I don't know if you know, but my style is quite dark and moody, so I'm just gonna grab curves, nope, a curves, and just darken this image just a little bit. Something like that is good. Now, I want to bring some attention towards the sun in this image. It's really cool um, that you can actually see the sun and it's not blown out, but I do want to just bring a little bit more attention to it. So what I'm going to do is grab the brush tool and just sample a color of the sun and start with quite a large brush somewhere around this sort of size looks good. And I'm gonna reduce the opacity of the brush to 10%. And then I'm just gonna click um, in the center of the sun just a couple times as I gradually reduce the size um, of the brush. Clicking more and more as I get towards the center. And then I'm gonna change the blend mode to linear dodge add. Um, and I'm actually gonna shift the color a little bit more towards the orange. So around there, I think, hit OK and just reduce the fill a little bit because at this stage it is a little bit bright. And I think that looks cool. So if I toggle that on and off, you can just see it kind of makes this, uh, the, what do you call that thing? The sun a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more, adds a bit more life to it, I guess. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is just increase the blues um, in the water a little bit. And by increase, I mean brighten them. I don't wanna actually increase the saturation in them because they're already quite saturated. Um, but by increasing the brightness, hopefully the saturation will be um, a little less because of that. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my blues channel and I'm just gonna select the lights of the blues channel and grab a, how do I wanna do this? Probably just a curves. Just bring up those just a tad, something like there. And again, I don't want this to be having any effect on the sky. So I'm gonna put it in a group and just mask out the sky with the gradient. And then I'm gonna grab this curves one more time, but I'm going to command option shift, click on the mask once more to refine that selection. And I'm gonna grab another curves, put that in its own group with a mask, invert the mask so it's black. And I'm just gonna paint over the sections of water um, with a flow of like four will do. And just to bring a little bit more attention to the water in the foreground. Obviously I would take my time doing this, but again, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna kind of rush it and do it as efficiently as possible. 
basically what I'm doing with this is just kind of creating like a almost natural vignette um, where I'm only accentuating the kind of the center uh, water motion-y bits here. Um, so if I toggle that on and off, you can see it's doing nothing because the curves layer has no adjustment to it. So that's a good one, Matt. Um, so I think there looks cool. Now if I toggle that on and off, yeah, you can just see it's brought out a little bit of tension, attention in that water. So now I want to create um, kind of a vignette, but I actually want to take some attention away from the top and left uh, side of the image. So I'm just going to grab another curves, reduce the brightness and just feather in with the gradient tool where I want that to be visible. So that looks cool and just take it a bit away from the right hand side. There we go. Um, now I'm going to grab the red lights. So command click on the red channel, uh, probably command shift option, click on it one more time, maybe a third time. And I'm going to grab a curves and just slightly brighten the highlights just around the sun there. Add a little bit of red. And there we go. So that's um, again affecting all these parts that are showing white down here. So I'm just going to feather that out with another gradient. And the same for the parts of the sky, not immediately around the sun. So toggle that on and off. That's the effect it's having. Now I want to increase the saturation of the image. And you could just grab the hue and saturation, bump the saturation up a little bit. Um, but one way that I've been doing it for quite a while now is this little adjustment uh, action that I've got here. Um, basically what it is is a channel mixer adjustment layer and in each channel I've increased the percentage of um, the output of each channel by 20%. So if it's the red channel I've increased the reds by 20% and then decreased the other two channels by 10%. So in the green I've got the green up by 20 and the other two colors down by 10 and then the same with the blue. And I just find this adds like a real natural saturation and it doesn't tend to clip the saturation in those colors. So I can increase this a little bit more. I think somewhere around 35 looks good. And now I want to create a vignette, grab the curves and I'm just going to darken it somewhere like that. Let's invert that. And I'm going to grab the lasso tool and just do kind of like an organic looking shape around the outside of the image. I'm going to delete that, invert it, and let's just feather this by around 500 ish, 600, a little bit less. That looks good. So basically the reason I do this and not using just the circle um, or the elliptical marquee tool is it just it creates kind of a more organic vignette to the image rather than just a straight up circle um, and I find it looks a little better. Um, so now I think I want to reduce the saturation a little bit more of the blues. So let's just use the little color picker tool. Um, I could even brighten it a tad, reduce the saturation and yeah, I think that looks okay. Again, let's remove that from the sky. And this is looking fairly okay at this stage. Um, now I'm gonna grab a, another hue and saturation and I'm just gonna shift the yellows and reds, I guess, uh, a little to the left just to make it a little bit more orange rather than yellow. I think that looks cool. Okay, so I want to add a little bit more contrast to the image. Uh, what I'm going to do is just command click on the RGB channel to create a light selection and I'm just going to save that as its own channel. And then I'm going to hit command shift I with that still selected and it's going to select the opposite pixels. So the darks in the image and again, I'm going to create a new channel from that. Then I'll hit command A to select all the pixels in the image and command option click on the lights to subtract the lights from that selection and then again subtract the darks from that selection. Uh, Photoshop's gonna say, no more pixels, uh, more than 50% selected. That's okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm just gonna grab a curves adjustment layer here and you can see on the mask that 
it did in fact create a selection. Um, so what it's doing is basically making only the midtones available to this adjustment layer. Uh, you can see the blacks or the original blacks in the image are black or near about to the mask and so are the highlights. So when I start with my curves here, it doesn't actually affect the lights or the darks in the image, only the midtones. And I just think that's like a really clean way to add contrast to an image. So I think we are done. If I toggle the before Photoshop and the after Photoshop, you can see it's not a massive difference. Um, and if I was editing this image properly, properly um, I'd go into much more detail and kind of paint things in more organically rather than just using global adjustment layers. And there you have it guys, that is the end. That is very briefly how I would edit the photo if it were my own. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, maybe you learned something. Um, huge shout out again to Dale for sending that photo in. Um, I got a few mm, images sent to me, so hopefully I can get through all of them and kind of release a few videos um, and make a series out of this. What do you guys think? So thank you guys for watching and thanks again to Dale and I will see you in the next video. Bye.